Hi, my name's David, and I've done a lot of my own edging in my backyard, and I'm just doing this um, brief video to show you that you can do it too. So a lot of this edging I did a few years ago, and it's still staying there, and it, it's in there quite well, and it looks good, easy to maintain, and mow up to, and whip a snipper around. So there's a new bit. I've just put some pavers out on the grass there. Um, see, there's no actual concrete. That's just showing a bit of the old bit I was doing earlier. So here I've just, the first step is just map out where you want to do the edging. Just put on top of the grass. Just make sure you get your spacing right. You want a bit of uh, mortar between the, the pavers. You don't want too much and you don't want too little. So just get a nice look like that. And sometimes a nice curve looks good. So here's the bit here. And this is the tool I use, a little pick which is really easy to um, dig the dirt around and uh, get all the loose rocks from underneath where you plan to have the pavers. So what I do, I do two or three at a time. I just take the, the weeds out and the grass and the loose rocks. And once it's all out, it's then just make sure there's still enough space release at one to two inches of mortar underneath the paver and a couple of inches around the paver so nothing's in the way. Um, once you get good at it, you don't need too many string lines, but it's always handy to have that when you start off. So also I put a, a, mat, a, a bit of material around the grass so I don't make a mess of the lawn as well. Here's some of the mortar you can use. You can buy it from Bunnings. It's about 5 to $10 a bag, and it's pre-mixed. You just add water. Um, so what I'll do is I'll mix it up on that material so I don't make a mess. So I've got a little bit of a string line too, so I want to make sure... I it aligns with the previous paving I've done. So here I've, I've mixed up the uh, mortar. So basically you want it like wet sand, a bit wetter than what you make a sand castle out of. Um, you'll see the consistency. You don't want it to flow everywhere and you don't want it to be too dry. Make, basically you, you can make a ball out of it and it'll stick together. You know, if it's a real hot day, it's always a good idea to wet the pavers um, which you'll see me doing as well, wet the pavers. I think this day was like 35 degrees Celsius. So make sure you mix up their own mixing up the mortar. And then I've got another bucket just watering and a sponge. So you can, you can clean the pavers as well as you go. So here I'm going to start actually laying the pavers down. As I said, I'll, I'll wet them on a hotter day. It's pretty good practice, that way the uh, mortar doesn't dry out too quick and it cracks along the paver. This way the mortar will actually seep into the actual paver and get a good glue joint to it. Also watered, put some water underneath the paver so to keep the sort from the dry soil drying out all the water out of the uh, mortar. There I'm placing the mortar down nice and tight, nice and packed down, but not too much. So what I'll do, I'll do a run of uh, mortar across in the direction where the pavers will go and it'll be fairly like a just a loose sort of mountain sort of shape. And all I want to try to do now is just get the right height and the right direction. I don't actually glue them in place at the moment, I just want to get the look right and then I'll fill in mortar between it later on. But so I do the first, always the first paper is the hardest to get right. That's like your keystone. Once that one's done, the rest will move from that. Also, I'm looking at the, the string as well. So aligning it with the string and aligning it with the previous paper. Between each paper, I like to have like a finger, a finger like width of distance between them. So there's plenty of room for more to go in between. So that's the first one set. Second one, I'll, I'll wet that as well. I've actually gone through previously and dug about about four foot along, or about a metre and a bit. And so I'll do a, a run of about four or five pavers in a go. And it's splashing down water again so the mortar doesn't dry out too much. On a, In cold weather, you wouldn't need to do this so much. Or if the weather, if you just had a lot of rain, you wouldn't need to do it at all. So it depends on the conditions, sort of how much water you use. So then I'll put another run of mortar down the bottom and put the next paver and have about a finger space between it. If the level's not right, I'll put a bit more mortar on it 
or push it down. So it's starting to get a bit of a look there, getting it together. So I've done four now in a row and it's just a bit of mortar on the bottom of them. So it's easy to move them if I need to. There's a fifth one going in there. I look fairly straight from there, so that's good. And I'll have a look and make sure they're, they're lining up. It's always good to have a break every so often, especially when you're starting off. The actual height of the pavers will just be the same height as a lawn, so they're not going to stick up too much anyway. And so it allows you to have a few little mistakes and you, it won't stick out too bad. So now I'm putting the mortar in between the joints. So I'm, just, I'm not really using many tools, just using my hands, which I found easier. I'm not a professional bricklayer by any means, I'm just a guy who likes to do stuff in my own backyard. Of course, it's not as fast as getting a professional to do it, but you know, you can do it yourself. Each of these pavers cost just over a dollar, so and the mortar's like five to ten dollars a bag, so you can do quite a bit for it, like twenty or thirty dollars. So it's quite cheap to do it yourself, and it's good fun too. So just go along doing the mortar in between the pavers. Just making sure it's digging it in, sticking it in with the fingers. Doesn't look too pretty at the moment, but that's okay. We'll sponge it down later. So yeah, just dabbing it in in between the actual pavers. Anything loose, just rub off and start putting it down near the sides of the pavers to keep them locked in place. So next I'll put it in the, the front side, put in the, a row of mortar to keep it locked in. And then, I'll, and then I'll do a row at the back as well. There I am doing it at the back just to keep it locked in, up nice and tight. So when we got the house originally built, or when we bought the house, they we got a, a company called Concept Landscapes to do the front paving, and this is similar to what they did. They probably did it a bit quicker, obviously, but the same sort of look. So it's, I'm copying what they've done. So now I'm sponging it off. Looks pretty good straight away. Wiping off the excess. Make sure you wring the sponge out so it's not too it's not dripping with water. And there you go, there's the run of five or six uh, pavers. So it's looking good. So next is the curve bit. So curve bits, it's a bit tricky getting your spacing right. Um, you can cut a paver in half, but that doesn't always look great. But sometimes you have no choice. There's always, I, I like doing curves, I find them easy to do, but you can't use a string line. It's just, you've got to work out what's your starting height and what's your finishing height, and then getting it to, from one height to the other in a nice, um, consistent um, flow. So just continuing as before, but this time I'm just doing it in a curve. So it's more about putting some mortar underneath the pavers wetting the pavers, getting the heights and the actual distance between the pavers right. It was a warm day as I said earlier, so just making those pavers wet will stop cracking, cracking around the edges of the paver, between the paver and the actual mortar. Similar to the ground, that way the ground, so the ground's not loose but a bit of water down there will stop it drying out the mortar. The mortar won't be as strong. You want the mortar to set over a couple of days, not in five minutes, because it just goes all powdery if it sets too quick. So just keep putting it down. Always put a bit extra mortar, and you can always press it down to the right height. So just moving in, give it a bit of a wiggle, press it down to the right height, and just keep going. So coming towards the last paper, just make sure you've got the spacing right there and the paper will fit in. So the earlier you do it, the better. 
There's also a, a, quite a big hole there because it's underneath a tap and it eroded quite a bit of soil away. So I've put some rocks under there as well. So you can see underneath the pavement, there's a couple of rocks down there. Rather than using straight mortar, use a couple of rocks in there, but I'll put mortar around those rocks so they're all embedded in the mortar. And there you go, you can see I'll put all the mortar around it. The rocks are underneath there. So you're not wasting too much mortar and also it makes it a bit st stronger as well with the rocks in there. So it's a bit of a gap, but uh, some, the tighter the curve, the bigger the gap you're going to have between the outer edges of the pavers. But um, if you do the mortar in between, so there's another piece of rock putting there to make it a bit stronger and not you don't have to use so much mortar. It also got rid of a lot of rocks I had around the yard. So two birds of one stone, getting rid of rocks and then using the rocks in the actual st structure of it. Now I'm putting the mortar in between the pavers. So just putting it in there. Making sure it's a good fit in there. And then around the edges as well to keep the pavers locked in place. So in case you, you know, kick at the paver, they won't just come out there quite strong. So, so I, I did some of this paving like five or six years ago and I was actually, actually, actually hit one of the pavers with a matic. It actually cracked the paver but didn't take it out of situ. So the paver still stayed there and it's still in place today. And you can't even notice. So it's quite strong. So you don't need to use too much mortar because you're just wasting money. But enough to just pack around it, keep it neat. And see, I'll, I'll leave like a one to two inch gap from the top of the paver on the edges so that the mortar doesn't go all the way up to the top. Because what I'll do on the inside, I'll put some decomposed granite and you can still see the, the paver rather than see mortar. You don't want to really see too much mortar, like locking it in place. So now I'm sponging it down. So it's a very satisfying part of the process. So you can only like rub it once or twice because it sort of gets dirty. So just keep flipping the sponge over while you do it. I would ju you just smear mortar all over the place. So you've got to keep cleaning the sponge as well. Use a clean surface when you actually do it. Here I'm doing an, another piece. So more or less, what I edge is the bits I don't want to mow and the bits I'm going to have garden beds. So this bit was, it's near the side of the house where I put the wheelbarrow and I don't really want to mow right in the corner. It's always a tricky place to mow. So I thought I'd do another edging here and then put some granite, decomposed granite to stop me mowing it and make keeping the, the house and yard maintained a lot easier. So first I dig a trench. Luckily the soil is very soft there. Just getting rid of the grass layer really. You don't want to dig it too deep. And now I've put a nice curve in it so it looks nice and sort of flows like feng shui I guess, but I don't really know much about that. So I'm just trying to measure the pavers up. Um, it was one, one of those situations where an extra paver didn't quite fit and having one less paver made a big gap. But So I did it with the big gap between the pavers, but it still looks okay. So again, setting the first one is always a tricky one. So just putting balls of uh, mortar underneath it, just getting the heights right and the, the direction of the pavers correct. I actually forgot to wet the pavers, so I've gone back and wet, wet the pavers, so they stick down a lot better. So one bucket's got water, one bucket's got mortar mix. Um, I had the... I make enough for probably like a run of six pavers, so I don't show the bits where I'm actually mix. I'm continually mixing up more mortar, just by hand. Uh, it's a good idea to wear gloves because the mortar really dries out your skin. You can make your hands a bit sore if you do too much. So edging's coming along, just run, doing the run with the mortar underneath and getting the direction and flow right. So you can see where I'm leading up to is another part of edging I did probably four years ago. Then the, the bit of the grass on the right hand, the opposite side to me, I'm going to dig all that out and uh, put decomposed granite there. That's a bit of like a staging area. So now I'll put the uh, mortar in between the pavers. It's 
quite a lot of fun doing this. You know, you don't do too much. Maybe just do a run of five pavers in one day. Just get your, do an easy part. Just get, get knack of it. And, you know, if you make a mistake, you can just get the uh, hammer and undo them again. You probably have like a, a few hours, you know, about five or six hours to, to change your mind if you want. It takes a while for the mortar to set, like half a day. So you've got plenty of time. If you've done something wrong, you can pull it all apart and wash the pavers and start again. And the pavers are only a dollar each, so if you break any, it doesn't matter. You can just buy a couple from Bunnings for a dollar each. I usually buy about 12 at a time and stockpile and then do them. So I've nearly finished all my edging in the yard, in the backyard. I actually have to redo some edging in the front yard. And uh, I'll do that later. Here we are, just wiping down, cleaning the edging. So on the side where I am, there's still a bit of a trench between the, ed the paving and the grass. I'll put some soil in there, then the grass will grow up to it. And on the other side, where I'm not standing, I'm going to dig all that out and put decomposed granite. So anyway, just cleaning up. Pretty happy with myself. If there's something like rain coming, that night there was rain coming, so I just put a tarp tarpaulin, tarpaulin over it and weighed it down some um, pavers. So there we go, it looks nice. nice. Do nice curves, it always looks nice to the eye. Rather than angular. Try to be like nature, I guess, like a river bed. So that's the bit I'm going to dig out there and put granite. That's the old edging there. So it goes to the new edging we just did. So I did all this in one go, which is quite good for, for me. I wouldn't suggest you to try to do that much in one go. Usually just do a run of five or six pavers. So this is what it looks like today, a couple of weeks later. Um, so nice flow into the rest of it. And uh, nice little sitting areas made. And I put the granite there where I've removed the grass. So uh, thanks for watching, hope you learned something and hope if you have any questions please send them through on the channel.